I'm Samantha B. I have a confession. Last night, I completely bailed on Alyssa Milano's sex strike. Shrek was on, I got very riled up. Ooh, the things I would do to that gingerbread man. <laughs> Clearly, the strike didn't work anyway. Today, Alabama effectively banned abortion from conception with no exceptions for rape and incest. Speaking of Alabama, no exceptions for rape and incest is also Roy Moore's dating profile. <laughs> the bill was sponsored in the state Senate by Clyde Chambliss, a man who shrugged off concerns about his expertise by saying, I don't know if I'm smart enough to be pregnant, so I appreciate the wisdom of our heavenly father. <laughs> if you're not smart enough to be pregnant, you're definitely not smart enough to legislate it. Chambliss, it really is dumb. When asked why the bill doesn't bother bestowing personhood on the thousands of zygotes in fertility clinics, he said the quiet part loud, the egg in the lab doesn't apply. It's not in a woman, she's not pregnant. <laughs> Cool. Shout out to all the men who told women we were being melodramatic when we said we were scared after Trump was elected. Unlike all the Plan B I bought in November 2016, <laughs> you smug chodes are past your expiration date. You know during the apocalypse those guys will tweet, anyone who's worried about having their flesh eaten by mutants should, oh God, ah. <laughs> Alabama's bill is the most far-reaching abortion ban this year, but it is not alone. Ohio Republicans are trying to ban insurance from covering almost all abortions, and six states have passed or are trying to pass so-called heartbeat bills. There have been more six-week abortion ban bills than Godfather movies, so I guess men really don't love anything more than policing women's bodies. <laughs> the one thing all these bills have in common is that the people writing them have no fucking idea how the internal reproductive system works. That's why I'm gonna do something that should have been done decades ago. I'm gonna teach sex ed to senators. class, you fucking idiots. Time to learn about vaginas, cycles, and why Charlotte from Sex and the City was sad for two whole seasons. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start with lesson one. We don't know we're pregnant the moment it happens. Eric Johnston, an attorney who helped draft the Alabama bill, thinks a man and woman can have sex and go straight to a clinic to determine if she's pregnant. First off, you gotta give her six minutes to clench her way to a toilet, otherwise she's gonna get a UTI and ruin an exam table. <laughs> Secondly, that isn't how it works. The most sensitive pregnancy test can't detect anything until eight or more days after fertilization, so if you're gonna be a psycho about it, wait 10 days and then buy her a bouquet of pea sticks like a gentleman. <laughs> Believe it or not, when a doctor says someone is six weeks pregnant, it doesn't even mean they've been pregnant for six weeks. Doctors calculate how far along someone is by counting from the first day of their last period, which can be up to five weeks before conception. Bet you didn't know uteruses were also time travelers. That's science, bitch. <laughs> It's still hard to know if you're pregnant at six weeks. You might have no symptoms, or if you do, there's symptoms like fatigue or bloating and gas. On the other hand, it does explain P.F. Chang's new motto, maybe it's not us, maybe you're pregnant. <laughs> Our next lesson goes out to Ohio rep John Becker, who hates logic as much as he hates women. This shaved ferret sponsored a bill that bans insurance from covering abortions, but allows insurance to cover a procedure that doesn't exist, reimplanting ectopic pregnancies. Part of that treatment would be removing the embryo from the uh, fallopian tube and then reinserting it in the uterus. So that's defined as not an abortion under this bill. Class is in session, dummies. You can't reimplant an ectopic pregnancy, you old tragic Kenneth from 30 Rock. <laughs> Becker's ignorance is going to kill people. Ectopic pregnancies are almost never viable. They are very dangerous and they can't be treated via close-up magic. An ectopic pregnancy happens outside the uterus, most likely in one of the fallopian tubes, but occasionally in other places, such as the ovary, abdominal cavity, or cervix. Never, regardless of what your childhood bully told you, does an ectopic pregnancy happen in the butt. <laughs> Except for Lindsey Graham, he was born out of butt. That's why he looks like that. Anyway, I 
assume the only ultrasound John Becker has ever seen is the one IHOP tweeted this weekend. I have so many questions, but I am imagining this. <gasps> aren't just legislating abortions. According to the Georgia law, if a woman has a miscarriage, she could be investigated to determine whether she received an abortion. What the people who wrote this law clearly don't understand is miscarriage is incredibly common. About 10 to 20 percent of known pregnancies end in miscarriage. Pregnancy loss can be devastating. Imagine if people were also forced to go through an unnecessary investigation. To put it in perspective for you male senators, it would be like if cops showed up every time you miracle whipped into your wife's good towels and accused you of genocide. Except different, because you never wanted to bring your shame tadpoles to term. Now, here's the lesson every single legislator should learn before writing abortion laws. What even is an abortion? Even politicians on the left don't seem to know the answer. Do you believe that a woman should be able to terminate a pregnancy up until the moment of birth? Look, I think that that happens very, very rarely, and I think this is being made into a political issue. Okay? So I think it's rare, it's being made into a political issue. It isn't rare. It is non-existent. You can't have an abortion at the moment of birth. Uncle Mothballs here isn't the only one getting it wrong. <laughs> Beto O'Rourke also whiffed, for one. You guys really, really need to get your facts straight, because when you don't, the right takes that ball and runs with it all the way to hell. The baby is born. The mother meets with the doctor. They take care of the baby. They wrap the baby beautifully. And then the doctor and the mother determine whether or not they will execute the baby. I don't think so. No, they don't. That would be homicide. Look, there are plenty of crazy positions on the left. For example, I believe the term manatee is too gendered. But no one is advocating for legalizing baby murder. When people say late-term abortion, they are usually referring to a procedure that happens during the 21st to 24th weeks of pregnancy. Most doctors don't even like saying late-term because there's no precise medical definition of the term, and it's misleading. Besides, only around 1% of abortions are performed at or after 21 weeks of gestation. Most most states already have laws to prohibit abortions after 20 weeks. Now, at this point, you might be having a negative opinion, which brings me to my next lesson. I don't give a shit about your personal opinions. <laughs> Here's another lesson. Birth control and morning after pills also aren't abortions, but they're being regulated like they are anyway. In Ohio, meanwhile, Republicans are proposing a bill to prohibit private insurance companies from covering abortions but could also limit access to birth control. When you get into contraceptives and abortifacients, that's you know clearly not my area of expertise, but I suppose if it were true that you know what we typically know as the, as the pill would be classified as an abortifacient, then I, I, would, I would imagine the uh, drug manufacturers would reformulate it so it's no longer an abortifacient and strictly a contraceptive. Here's what John Becker should have said. That's you know clearly not my area of expertise. Stop it! Control pills contain hormones that prevent a person from ovulating. The morning after pill works similarly and can also prevent fertilization and implantation. Neither of them cause abortions. Banning them sure does, though. Look, I have to wrap up because I gotta go teach gym for senators. Look. <laughs> These laws are designed to oppress and control and ultimately overturn Roe v. Wade. And if they succeed, they will directly result in death and poverty for women and other vulnerable people. But it is especially fucked up that the people doing the regulating wouldn't recognize a vulva if it bit them in the face. Oh, <laughs> yes, I forgot to tell you this one thing. They all bite. We'll be right back. <laughs>